Hey guys, so in this video we're looking at systems of linear equations and three variables. Uh, this will be the first of three versions of that we see in this chapter. Uh, just a reminder of the row operations. Hopefully this is all a review from 98 or 95 um, or 102. Um, so we can interchange any two equations if we find that helpful. We probably won't in this section, but we will a little later in the chapter. We can multiply both sides of an equation by a non-zero constant. And then we can add together any two equations, um, and that's we do that to try to eliminate one of the variables. Um, so our steps for kind of solving these is to pick um, any pair of equations and solve, uh, it really should say, to eliminate one variable. Um, pick another pair of equations, so a different pair of equations, but then eliminate the same variable. And then after that, you'll have two equations, two unknowns, um, which goes back to that 94, where we just do sort of, we eliminate one more variable get an answer and then we back solve our way through um, and that was step four so let me show what all that looks like with an example okay so for the system of equations um, i can eliminate any of the variables i happen to pick x no good reason for it i just did so um, y would have actually probably been easier uh, a little bit smaller numbers but x will work just fine so the first thing i did was i i went um equation one and then I'm going to do the negative of equation 3 and then solve that. So here's equation 1. Oops. And then the negative of equation 3. So that'll be negative x, negative y, negative z. And that will flip this side and be a positive 4. And so I'm going to call that this new one equation 4 just to give it a name. X's drop out as planned. I got negative 3y plus z equals 4. And then I'm going to pick a different pair of equations. Um, I'm going to pick uh, 2 and 3. And then I'm going to eliminate um, x again. So I'll do equation 2. And then I'll go uh, negative 6 times equation 3. So negative 6x, negative 6y, negative 6z, negative negative for 24. So x is drop out, and that was the plan. I got negative 5y minus 3z equals 30. And just to give it a name, I'm going to call this one 5. So now that I have a 4 and a 5, and they're both in y and z, and it doesn't matter which two variables as long as they're the same ones, now I can eliminate one of these. And then that's going to let me get my first answer. So I'm going to multiply equation 4 by um, 3. And you can see why I'm doing that is that um, that's going to knock out this z in equation 5. So I'm going to get 5y. And so here I get negative 14y. And here I get the z's drop out, so I get 42. And then dividing both sides by negative 14, I get y equals uh, negative 3. Once I know that, I can bring that back to either equation 4 or 5. 4 has a little bit smaller numbers, so I'm going to pick that one. So negative 3 times negative 3 plus z equals 4. So 9 plus z equals 4 or z equals uh, negative 5. So I've just back solved with this variable into one of my two variable equations, and that's gotten me my second answer. So now I have y here, I have z. Then I take both of these, throw them into one of the originals, and get my last one. And it um, looks like equation 3 looks the easiest, so I'm going to use that. So x minus 3 minus 5 equals negative 4. So x minus 8 x negative 4, adding that over, x equals 4. So my solution set's going to be 4, negative 3, negative 5. So that's what they look like when, um, when it all works. And so we got uh, one solution, which is kind of the normal thing. Remember, we have two different, uh, actually three different things that can happen. Uh, we can get one solution, we can get no solutions, so we're going to call that inconsistent in this course. Um, we can also get the kind of have infinite solutions, which we're going to call dependent. Um, so let me show you an example of each of those. So number two, this one's definitely set up for the x's to be easy. 
So I'm just going to do 1 and 3 together, and that will eliminate an x. Oops. And then we'll do 3. And x's drop out, and I get 7y, and then plus 7z equals negative 6. And then I'm going to do um, 2 and 3 together. And then adding those, the x's drop out again, and I get 6y plus 6z equals 15. And so you can see how these sides are multiples of each other, um, and so they're going to end up canceling out. These sides aren't multiples, so they're not going to cancel. Um, let me show that step. I'm going to go 6 times equation, oops, call this one 4, and call that one 5. So I'm going to go 6 times equation 5. So that would be 42y, 42z equals 6 times 6, negative 36. And then I'm going to go negative 7 times equation, um, oops, sorry, that was equation 4, negative 7 times equation 5. So that would be negative 42y, negative 42z. And then negative uh, 7 times this would be 105. So adding these drop out and these drop out, and I get 0 equals negative 141. And so when we get this false statement like that, that means that the system is inconsistent. And so that's the word we'll see now instead of no solution. So then the third outcome is that the uh, system has infinite solutions. And that one's kind of a bummer this quarter because now we have to actually go find the infinite solutions. Um, new word for this is going to be dependent, and you'll see that um, when we write our solution set, we're going to make two of the variables dependent on our choice of the third one. And so that's where that name comes from. Um, so here I eliminated x again. Uh, so I'm going to go equation 1, and we go negative 2 times equation 2. So that would be uh, 2x minus y, 3z and 1, and then negative 2x negative negative, so 4y plus 2z equals negative 2 times 3 would be negative 6. And then adding those together, these drop out, and I get uh, 3y, oops, that should be a plus, sorry, 5y, and then minus z equals negative 5. Um, then I'll go negative 2, or sorry, the negative of equation 2. So negative x plus 2y plus c equals negative 3. And I'll use that to eliminate this x here in equation 3. So x plus 8y minus 3z makes negative 7. Uh, x's drop out, 10y minus 2z equals negative 10. And so this time, if um, this is my 4 and this will be my 5, I'll go negative 2 times equation 4. So that's negative 10y plus 2z equals 10. And I'll do equation 5 with that. And then you see what happens. Everything drops out. So I get 0 equals 0 instead of like a false statement. This one's not very interesting, but it's a true statement. And so what that means is that this system is dependent. Then, unfortunately, what can happen is we have to let um, one of the variables be our independent variable. And you can use any of them. Um, I think the homework uses Z, so that's what I use in the notes. And then we have to find the other two variables in terms of that. So let me show you what that would look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let Z... Let Z um, equal any number. So z is just going to be z. And now I need to get the other two um, variables in terms of z. So I'll grab equation 4 here. I'm just going to copy it up here. And then I'm going to solve this for y. So I'm going to add the z over. 
Oops. And then divide this five. And so I get y equals z minus five over five. Um, if I want to write that a little less fractionally, I could also write it one fifth z minus one. So divisible one here. So one over five is one fifth and five over five is one. I think that's probably the form you would see in the book. Um, and then I'm going to take one of the three variable equations and, and toss this into it, which will give me x and z, and then um, solve for x. So I took uh, the second equation because the x was by itself and the numbers are smaller. So I'm going to copy that one down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and put it right there for that y. So that'll look like x minus 2 and then 1 fifth z minus 1 minus z equals 3. And so now I want to try to get x by itself and everything in terms of z. So that's going to look like x minus 2 fifths z minus minus plus 2 minus z equals 3. And... Um, so now I need to get these fractions combined. Um, I think I'll get this 2 over there just as I'm writing this out. And so this is going to be minus 2 fifths z. Adding the 2 over is going to make this side a 1. Right now I have minus z, so I'm going to write that as minus 5 over 5z. Um, so I'm just writing it with a common denominator. And then uh, minus 2 minus 2 is going to make this a 1. Uh, so right there I would have x minus 7 fifths z equals 1, and then finally I'll add that over. So x equals 7 fifths z plus 1. So what that means my solution set is, is x is this piece. y is this piece. And then z is any number, so z is z. And so what we've done is we've written um, x and y in terms of z, so now they're dependent. And there's that name, d dependent on my choice of z. So if I pick z equals 0, for instance, then x is 1, and this would drop out, and y is negative 1. So I could pick any value for z and then generate every point of intersection between um, these three planes. So we'll see this a couple more times coming up in the next sections with a couple of different versions of solving.